Good morning. It's the introduction of the Total Eclipse with the integrated flight management system from Eclipse Aerospace and ISNS Innovative Solutions and Support. I think the, uh, the biggest change we want to show here is the fact that we were able to pull the Garmin 400s back out of the panel and install the uh, keyboards back into the, back into the panel for full integration to the cockpit. Uh, today we'll be able to show you a, an introduction of uh, the FMS and the map, uh, the moving map on the aircraft. The uh, keyboards do work, they are installed both sides and you can actually start by hitting selecting map and FMS on the keyboard. You can also do it here on the main screen so you have map as well as FMS. Today we can show you how to create a flight plan and how it overlays on the integrated flight management system with the Eclipse 500. In the FMS tab, which we have selected on the left hand screen, we have active, progress, route, nearest airports, user defined waypoints, and vertical navigation. In our active page, this is where we'll be able to create a flight plan and also edit the flight plan in flight. Progress will show you the progress of the flight plan, in this case, PDK down to Charleston, South Carolina. The routes, it'll store 99 flight plans. So if you have a frequent airport that you fly to from your, uh, from your or origination to destination, you can uh, store it here for quick, easy access for activating flight plans instead of having to type it in every single time. You have the nearest airports. So this is nearest to your current destination or, or position, excuse me. So at this case, we're in PDK. It gives us the frequency of the tower and the runway length. In flight, if we were flying and had an in-flight emergency, we would be able to go to nearest and it would show us the frequency for the tower, how far away we are, what direction that airport is in, as well as the runway length of that airport. User-defined waypoints would be Latin longs or fixes that we would put in manually ourselves. In this case, we have none stored. And a vertical navigation page. This is where we can set crossing restrictions for uh, flight plans as well as arrivals and departures, things like that. We can, uh, you can set positions, altitudes, and climb rate, and excuse me, and descent rates for uh, crossing restrictions. In this case, we'll go ahead and show you how to start and create a flight plan. We will start in route and hit create flight plan. The first thing you do is you actually name your flight plan. We're going to go ahead and enter the flight plan's name. We're going to be PDK to Charleston today. Papa Delta Kilo. And I'll put a space in here over to Charleston. Push the bu big button in to store the flight plan's name. Now it's going to ask for an origin. PDK, today we're departing runway two right. Select, you have the choice of all the runways obviously. We're going to select runway two right for departure and continue. For destination, we're going to go over to Charleston, which is Charlie Hotel Sierra. And we'll select via Charlie Hotel Sierra. Once again, the keyboard is installed. You can use the keyboard or you can use the round knobs for functionality here. We'll select Charleston and uh, we'll check the weather here at a later date to set in the runway and approaches. We'll hit continue and activate the flight plan. So just select activate. And once you select activate, you hit confirm. Now we have PDK to Charleston overlaid on our moving map, MFD. We just got a uh, flight plan clearance, which takes us up to um, Collier's IRQ, on over to Columbia and down to Charleston. So we'll go ahead and uh, modify our flight plan at this point. So we'll start at PDK, push the big button in, and we're going to hit insert. From here, we can put in our fix. IRQ. Integra Release 9 sets a new standard with the easiest to use pilot interface in all of general aviation. Access to any of Release 9's powerful capabilities is as simple as pressing the desired bi-directional page key. Pressing the same key in a desired direction navigates to the clearly labeled tabs with no more guessing as to what a given pilot input would do. Avidine's Integra Release 9 is the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology and the easiest to use page and tab user interface is just one of the many benefits designed to make your flying easier and safer. From Collier's, we're going to select insert 
It'll give us the jet airway. We're going to take J52 off of Collier's, which is our clearance. Collier's J52, J47 to Charleston. So J52, and we're going to go up to Columbia. And then off of Columbia, we're going to insert J47. And we're going to go down to Charleston. So now we have PDK, Collier's, Columbia, Charleston, execute modified flight plan. And as you can see, the overlay files us now. PDK over to the Collier's fix, up to Columbia and down J47 into our final destination, Charleston. What's really nice about the system and the FMS being fully integrated is that it actually already is talking to the chart side of things. So we can go to return to chart list and return to airports, and it gives you your origination of PDK and destination of Charleston 222 miles away. At this point, we'll go ahead and check the weather by selecting XM data. And in Charleston, it's currently winds are 160 at 10 knots, 10 miles visibility, scattered at 4,500, scattered at 6,000, and broken at 7,500. In this case, they'll be using runway 15 in Charleston. We'll go ahead and hit return to airports, and we're going to select the Charleston airport by pushing the big knob in. We've got Charleston selected now. We can pull it to ILS to runway 15, I'm sure. We'll just do a GPS to 15 in this case. GPS, runway 15. Once you have it selected, push the big knob in and it will bring up your chart. You can read the whole chart by turning the knob up and down, get all the data you need for that approach plate. Now if we go back to our moving map, it will actually overlay the approach plate onto the MFD screen. So as we fly on to the, uh, a little bit farther in the flight plan, and we fly into our final destination, we'll have a, a quick view of the approach plate on the screen there. As you can see, we have weather down to the south. If we wanted to, uh, to make sure that we weren't going to be in any weather here, we have many functionalities of the IFMS that aren't on other products, which is under our map settings. You can overlay flight plans, overlay your e-chart like we just did, which is something that's specific to the integrated flight management system, as well as under XM. We have NEXRAD coverage, cloud tops, echo tops, storm cells, lightning cells, winds aloft. In this case, I want to show you how the um, echo tops work. So we'll enable the echo tops and we're going to fly over at 30,000 feet. So we'll select 30,000 feet and we'll return to the map. As we refresh, we see that there's no cloud tops, even in the thunderstorms to the south, that are up to 30,000 feet. So we're in good shape here. I'm going to go ahead and hit map settings and return to the XM and we'll take the echo tops out. It gives you XM ages here for the data that you received. So as you see, we're, we're current. I'm going to go ahead and go back and enable the next rad and return to map. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online, audio, and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio, and video programs every year, only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight, and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. Once again, I'll show you how it works. As we get over to our destination, I'll go to a quick zoom. As the data updates with the XM refresh, it'll give you a refresh screen here. And it'll go away as it clears up the data. So we'll zoom in just a little bit farther. This gives you full overlay of the aircraft onto the, onto the MFD as well as onto the chart. And I'll zoom in just for a little bit more data for you just so you can see the clarity of it. We'll give you a full screen. You hit map twice and it'll actually give you a full map overlay. And there's Charleston for the destination. Now what's really neat here is shooting the approach. We can actually overlay the chart and the MFD moving map so that you can overlay your crossing restriction. So as we're flying along here, we have Basri. I'm going to get that out of the way there for you. Sorry. Basri, 2400. Anur at 1600. And Tumsey at H20. You can actually see the aircraft flying on the screen here as we come in on the approach. I'm going to zoom back out and put you back in map, map, and map. And once again, you can see the full overlay of the flight plan with the integrated FMS. I'll give you a little bit more zoom.
Real quick, I want to show you the winds aloft, how that works. In the map settings and the XM settings, you can scroll down to winds aloft, enable the winds aloft. And this is at 30,000 feet for our cruise flight over. We'll also lay up the legend, so we'll enable legend and return to map. Now it gives you a winds aloft chart, so our cruise data. So we're going to have a tailwind of 85 knots going home. If we wanted to fly at a, a faster, obviously 92 and 98 knots higher up, we could choose those or, or go lower. I'll take the winds aloft back out and we'll make sure we have the next rad is enabled and return to map. Getting back to the FMS, if we were to take off and they wanted us to go directly to Charleston, what's really nice about the FMS is it allows you for a quick change. So we'll select the Charleston VOR, direct to Charleston, and we can activate. And it'll redraw our line and recenter us up. Let me go back in the XM here actually and take that legend out just to clear it up a little bit more. There we go. So now you can see our line direct to Charleston from PDK. Once you have the uh, data selected and you have your destination, you just want to come over to your main PFD and select FMS. Then you can select the FMS under your bearing number two and it'll actually give you a distance to that destination, which is really nice. So you can see as we fly along, if we were coming in and shooting the approach and you were going to shoot an ILS, you would just tab select to the ILS frequency. 152 on the course, 1097 is the frequency for the ILS. And you can get a quick change of data there. So you can still leave in your FMS bearing which will be your blue needle, and then you have your ILS selected on your yellow needle.